the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Um, before I start, I just want to say thank you to Sarah and Jocelyn for giving me this opportunity to speak here with you all today. I thank God for helping me and being present with me as I share his word and how I interpret it. Lastly, I would like to thank you all for being here today. Like what we have just heard in the second lesson, 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves a parent loves a child. In my case, this statement is very true. If you know my parents, then you know me. And if you know me, then you know my parents. From a tender age, my parents taught me to always help those in need. Even though we didn't have a lot of money, they showed me how important it is to give back to the new, to give back, to be neighborly and to love those as you love yourself. My parents were always working and sometimes it was difficult to hang out with friends or to be together. Although there wasn't much time to be together as a family, the times we spent together was serving others and they made that a priority. They said volunteering or little acts of service can make a big difference and help build community. And it's the right thing to do because Jesus would do the same. And we are here to follow in his footsteps. They made me realize that many other families and individuals have it much harder than our situation. This taught me that lending a hand to others, no matter what, is important. So growing up, my whole family would volunteer at shelters, my school, serve food to the homeless, pick up trash, and more. I remember at the age of five, I used to accompany my mom and my sister to a place where my auntie worked. She worked at a place called Ecumenical Hunger Program Center, located in East Palo Alto, where it was dedicated to helping those in need. I remember it was a place that was busy, filled with gratitude and kindness, where people came seeking assistance with food, for food, clothes, and more. Even at a young age and growing up, I found myself drawn to the idea of lending a hand. I sensed the excitement that bubbled up inside of me as I eagerly helped out in, in, in whatever I could do. I loved helping out and having to do things. Just feeling needed made me happy. But one thing that I didn't love so much was waking up in the morning. That was a struggle. You can't tell me six o'clock on a Saturday was not too early for a five-year-old. I still believe waking up at six in the morning is very hard. Anyways, despite waking up in the morning, just helping out at the place made my day, even if it was tiring. It felt gratifying to be useful and to know that my actions were making a positive impact on someone else's life. The people that came by smile made it worth it. Reflecting on those days now, I realized that my understanding of why I volunteered was perhaps a bit simplistic. Yes, I was aware of the issues of homelessness and hunger, and I knew that my efforts were helping in some capacity. But looking back, I think a large part of why I volunteered was because of my parents. They were guiding me and encouraging me to embrace the value of service and generosity. Their unwavering support and encouragement played a significant role in shaping my desire to give back to others. As I grew older, I found more opportunities to lend a, to lend a hand, both at school and at church. Whether it was helping out during the lunchtime at the Tongan congregation, serving as an altar server, or picking up trash and putting away chairs at school. I discovered numerous ways to make a difference in my community, even if it was small. Despite my efforts, I never fully understood the true significance of volunteering beyond the teachings of Jesus. For example, in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, it says, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It wasn't until my junior year 
when my class embarked on an urban plunge that I began to grasp the profound impact of serving others. My social ethics class is where we learn about social structures, systems, issues, and communities. We have an urban plunge where students that take this class go on an immersive, immersive experience to help students to hear their stories and to take a step into their shoes. For my urban plunge, we went to San Jose. When we made it to the food bank, our task was to pack food and distribute to those who come in. During that time, I had a meaningful encounter with a young woman who was just a year older than me and was homeless. She expressed her admiration for our efforts in serving, which warmed my heart. But she talked about how important it is of what we were doing and made me realize the impact of our actions. Through my experience here at St. Paul's, I come to understand that connecting with God can take various forms. Whether it's reading the Bible, journaling, or meditation. Personally, I found that caring for my neighbors resonates deeply with me. It echoes Jesus' teaching about selflessly laying down our lives for others, embodying the profound power of love and compassion towards each other. We're all called to serve our neighbors, to love them, to cherish them, and to uplift them. For in doing so, we reflect the essence of God's love and grace. In reflection of my journey thus far, I am reminded of the words from John chapter 15, verse 15, where Jesus speaks of friendship and trust. I do not call you servants any longer because the servants does not know what the master is doing. This passage teaches us that while we may not always understand what lies ahead, God does. And it's our duty to put our trust in him. Initially, I didn't fully comprehend why my parents encouraged my sister and me to volunteer and help those in her need. However, I've come to realize their guidance was rooted in Jesus' in Jesus' teaching, urging us to emulate his compassionate spirit. I graduate in 18 days. <laughs> I am so excited. Um, I can't believe it's 18 days, but I'm not counting. Um, <laughs> I am excited to graduate and go to college, but I'm scared. Scared to be on my own, without much family, not knowing what's coming next. But I trust in God. Jesus' words, you did not choose me, but I chose you, resonates deeply with me, reinforcing the belief that our paths are guided by a higher purpose, just as Jesus likened himself to the true vine and us to the branches. I strive to bear fruit through the acts of service and sharing his word. As a senior, I serve as an ambassador for the prayer and worship group at my school, endeavoring to foster a community of faith among my, young, among my peers. Similarly, here at St. Paul's, I've come to understand God's call to love our neighbors and to bear fruit. Not only through our relationship with him, but also through our connections with others. It's a reminder that while God stands ready to bless and uplift us, our willingness to engage in his work is essential. To bear fruit that he desires. Amen.